in order to refute the false attachment to a really existing realm exterior to mind and its activities, we teach that there is nothing but consciousness, Vichvyaplimtra. But if one believes that consciousness only really exists, this is no different from attachment to external objects, and it remains attachment to dermas. 7. Cessation of attachment to dermas Belief in dermas is of two kinds, innate and resulting from imagination. Innate attachment to dermas results from an innate power of false perfuming existing from beginningless time and is always present in the individual. It does not arise from false teachings or imagination but evolves spontaneously, hence it is called innate sahaja. This in turn takes two forms. The first is constant and continuous. It is located in the seventh consciousness, manas, which, taking the eighth, palaya, consciousness as its object, produces an image that is natural to the mind and grasps it as a real dharma. The second kind is discontinuous. It is located in the sixth consciousness and takes as its object images of the aggregates, sense bases, and sense fields that evolve from the eighth consciousness. It produces an image that is natural to the mind, wholly or in part, and grasps it as a real dharma. These two forms of attachment to dermas are subtle and difficult to eliminate. They can only be culminated later in the ten bodhisattva stages, by me, through the repeated cultivation of the most excellent contemplation of the emptiness of dermas, dharmasiyanyala. Attachment to dermas through imagination results from the power of present, external conditions, therefore it is not innate. It results from the presence of false teachings and imagination for it to occur later. Thus it is called, imagination. It is found only in the sixth consciousness, and it is of two kinds. The first kind takes as its object the aggregates, sense bases, etc., taught in a false teaching, produces an image that is natural to the mind, and imagines and judges it to be a real dharma. The second kind takes as its object images such as self-nature, etc., taught in false teachings, produces an image that is natural to the mind, and judges such things to be real dermas. These two forms of attachment are coarse and thus easy to eliminate. They are eliminated upon entrance into the first of the ten bodhisattva stages when one contemplates the true state of things as the emptiness of all dermas. Of these different kinds of attachment to dermas, dermas external to mind may or may not be grasped, but all dermas within mind are grasped. Therefore all attachment to dermas has as an object apparently real dermas that appear from the mind but are grasped as real dermas. However, the images of apparently real dermas are produced from conditions and are therefore like illusory phenomena. These, real, dermas as objects of attachment are falsely imagined and thus do not really exist. Therefore the Buddha has said, you should realize, O Mithraya, that objects of consciousness are only the manifestations of consciousness and are dependent upon other dermas for their appearance, like illusions, etc. Consequently, selves and dermas apart from consciousness, such as are grasped by non-Buddhists and other Buddhist schools, do not really exist. Therefore mind and its activities do not have external dermas as their condition in the form of object, because the function of taking something as an object must, by definition, have a reality as an object. A certain present unit of mind and its activities are not the object of another unit of consciousness because they are categorized as being different units of consciousness, resembling dermas that are not objects. Also, the activities of one group are not the immediate condition for the consciousness of the same group, because they are separate from consciousness itself, resembling other things that are not grasped. Consequently, you must realize that there is no real external realm but only internal consciousness appearing as if it were an external realm. Thus a verse from a scripture says, no external realm imagined by the ignorant exists, mind is agitated by perfuming and therefore evolves as objects. It is objected, by the Vicesicas, that if there are no real selves or dermas apart from consciousness, then there can be no metaphorical use of terms, because there would be no basis for the metaphor. In order for there to be metaphors, there must be real things, something that resembles, and common elements. For instance, you have a real fire, a man who resembles fire, and the common element of fierceness and redness. Thus you can metaphorically say, this man is a raging fire. Likewise, you can say, this man is an ox, etc. But if there are no real selves or dermas, 
How can terms be used metaphorically? There being no metaphor, you cannot establish resemblance, so how can you claim that mind evolves resembling external objects? We reply, your objections are not reasonable, because we have already refuted selves and dermas that exist apart from consciousness. Also, to speak of fire metaphorically, whether as a species or as a substance, is unjustified in either case. This principle does not hold even in the case of species, because the qualities of fierceness and redness do not exist in the species, fire. If you establish a metaphor without any common qualities, you would metaphorically speak of water as fire. If you say that even though fierceness, etc., are not qualities of a species but are never separated from the species, and therefore the use of metaphor is legitimate, this is wrong, because when a human being fierceness and redness are present but not united, the species, man, does not possess the qualities and the two remain distinct. However, we speak metaphorically of fire in reference to people, and we therefore know that metaphorical expression is not necessarily based on species. Nor can the principle of metaphorical expression based on substance be established, because qualities such as redness are not common to both substances. If you claim that fierceness and redness are found in both fire and in men but the substance of each is different because the support is different, then to speak metaphorically without a common substance is to be subject to the same error as before, in reference to species. If you say that it is possible to speak metaphorically because the qualities of men and fires resemble each other, this is unfounded, because you are speaking of fire in a man, not in his qualities. Consequently, metaphorical expression does not occur on the basis of substance. Also, it is not reasonable to say that a metaphor requires a real thing, as a basis for comparison, because reality means the distinct characteristics, sva slash oksana, and it is not the object of conventional knowledge and expression. That is, Conventional knowledge and expression do not reach the distinct characteristic of the thing. They only function with regard to common characteristics, samanyalaksana, of dermis. But there is no other way of reaching the object apart from conventional knowledge and expression, so it is agreed that the distinct characteristic is the support of the knowledge and expression. However, conventional knowledge and expression must occur on the basis of sound. However, they do not occur if the sound does not reach the organ. Neither that which expresses nor that which is expressed are the distinct characteristic, and so we say that metaphorical expression does not have a real entity as a support. It only occurs when there is a quasi-entity for the support of a metaphor. Quasi means that, the entity, is a superimposition, not a real characteristic. Sound evolves on the basis of the quasi-characteristic of superimposition, and therefore it cannot be claimed that metaphor necessarily has a real thing as its support. Therefore these objections do not conform to proper principles. However, the Buddha has employed metaphorical expressions, such as, dermas, in connection with the transformation of consciousness in order to refute the notion of real selves and dermas. Thus a verse from the Ganavayatha Sitra says, to refute real selves and dermas grasped by the foolish, he spoke metaphorically of selves and dermas in connection with the transformation of consciousness.